Yeah, Hello, fun. everybody. Hey. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Tiffany Smith from Fandango and DC All Access. So excited to welcome you all here with the cast of Suicide Squad. Give them a massive round of applause. Woo. Yeah. All right, you guys. So let me introduce you to the cast of Suicide Squad. First up, we've got Adewale Akinoye Agbaji. Yo. Woo. <laughs> We got, right. yes. Yeah, yes. Well done, baby. Adam yeah. Beach up next. Yeah. yeah. Jared Leto. <laughs> I like that Will is just Leto. cheering for everybody. Jared Leto's Jared joining Leto. us. Yeah. 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 Next up, Mr. Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Viola yeah. Davis. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got Joel Kinnaman. Yeah. Yeah. Producer Richard Suckle. Cara <laughs> Delavine is with us. Jay Hernandez. And our director, of course, we've got David Ayer with us. Margot Robbie. Guy Courtney with us. Karen Bukahara. Producer Chuck Roven. I'm gonna start off the questions, you guys. So there's so much hype surrounding this movie. What is it like for you guys, the actors, director, producer, bringing these characters to the big screen and balancing what comic book fans already know and what you guys wanted to bring to the characters? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You go, oh, I think Jared yeah. should go first since yeah. he had the hardest job on the no, whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it was uh, it was actually the role of a lifetime. I had so much fun playing the Joker. Uh, I could easily just play the Joker a couple more times and retire. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be like that. You know? <laughs> on, it, you know? It was a buzz. But you guys seemed like you were having all the fun on the movie. Yeah, no, we, we, yeah. we, were, we were really uh, enjoying it. David Ayer has a, uh, a very interesting process of getting actors into uh, their characters. Uh, we, we, we it's called manipulation. Manipulation, <laughs> yes, yes. Manipulation, <laughs> domination, <laughs> torture, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we, we all got in a room and he had, you know, essentially is much more like therapy than that it was, uh, you know, a character creation. So we, we sat and we talked about our lives and, you know, we, we, we got really close as we, you know, our triumphs and tribulations and trials and, and then at the most opportune moment, Joel describes it best, that he would, he would completely betray us. <laughs> <laughs> and betray that trust. Just... You know, and he would get a very unique reaction. You know, like... <laughs> It's like a uh, you know a gymnasium for acting is the way I look at it, mm -hmm. and, and it just kind of uh, you know I, I needed these guys to feel like they're best friends on camera, and mm -hmm. you know when you're with your best friend you share secrets, you talk about your inner life. There's a way you talk to a really close friend, and and I wanted them to have that energy. And the fastest way to get there was to have them beat the hell out of each other, share their secrets, and uh, that, otherwise that, yeah. That's, friends also, do. that's also how you start a cult. A cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd all show up for training and we'd be fighting, hurting each other. And next thing you know, David would I, show up. And Adam, what, what you were doing, I do not want to categorize that as training. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was screaming, getting in character. He was, he was the best, the Adam best was part. doing body squats, body weight squats like this. And he was going like, ah, ah, ah. They were hard. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> but what I wanted to say, David was a champ. He'd show up, train with us, beat us up. There was this moment he was sparring with Karen, and she got it in the nose. Back. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she, her guard was open. <laughs> That's what he said to me after he punched me in the face. He said, you got to block your face, Karen. <laughs> It's true, it's true, it's my fault. It never happened again, though. That's true, that's true. And you know what? You took it out on me. This man made me push so many weights and get big. And when I got to the size that he desired for Killer Croc, and I figured I was ready, he said, now you got to fight Karen. 
Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you look at the size of her. But, uh, she got some mad she, cardio, though. She beat, yeah. she beat the crap out of Croc. circles around him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I could go all out because Ottawale's so big and strong, so I can just punch all the way. <laughs> Well, clearly you guys all really bonded on the set, and I know that our press have some great questions for you guys as well, so let's take our first one from right over there. What's your name? Deborah. What's your question? Where is she? Deborah. Uh, for Margo, uh, Will, and Jared, what was the most challenging um, aspect of making this movie, and was anybody mildly injured during any of the physical scenes or any mishaps during the physical? <laughs> Mild, mild injuries. Mild, yeah. You, when you're when you're 47, no injury is a mild injury anymore. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I, uh, I I tore my calf uh, a couple of weeks in, and it, it was uh, and what's terrible is you 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 do it doing nothing. Like I wasn't doing anything. We you know we're sparring, and I step back to throw a shot, and my calf popped, and you know, you could, you could hear it, people could hear it, and everybody was like, ooh, there's that, that's, that's, that's not good. Whatever that sound was is not a good sound. And then he said, the doctor told me I was down for six weeks. Uh, so right. on a movie like this, you know, six weeks uh, clicks off, or can click off at, you know, significant amounts of money <laughs> that uh, I, I wasn't gonna pay for it, you know. But it, it, was, um, it was really scary. To, to be in that position, I was like, oh my God, this opportunity, Suicide Squad having this chance, and maybe not going to be able to, to, to deliver the way I wanted to. But it, Will, Will soldiered on, and then I think three seconds later, Joel blew out his cap. Yeah, his Joel, yeah. Exact same. It just, you know, yeah. I was just trying to show sympathy. Sympathy, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like a sympathy <laughs> pregnancy. Solidarity yeah, yeah. Yeah. injury. I don't, what do you got to say, pregnancy? Oh, yeah, it just makes it weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was awkward. That, that was, made it yeah, awkward. Yeah, Sorry, we should move on. Yeah. We should, move we should on. just keep going. <laughs> Margo, what was the hardest part for you, like, other than doing everything we had to do, except you did it in heels? Yeah, that, that, that was tricky. Um, and I had less layers to hide, padding and stuff, doing stunts, so that, that made it a little painful. I, I only got, I think we, I thought I broke my rib at one point, but I actually just, <laughs> I, yeah, I actually did. tore the muscles off the rib instead of breaking it, but it was fine, it was and towards the end. planted coming off the chopper. Oh my gosh, yeah. that yeah. hurt so much. Middle of the take, there's like 50 extras, there's, you know, pyrotechnics, oh. <laughs> got up, knees raw, like palms I bleeding. I fell from like this high up, going, straight though. onto oh. my knees on the bitumen. Yeah. It was so painful. That no, was no, that she stands up, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't cry in front of all those people. I was like, I'm good, I'm good. I fell off a stage the other day in Toronto as well. Again, just popped up. I was like, that didn't hurt. And I was like... <laughs> just internal bleeding. Yeah. 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 Um, but the hardest part wasn't the physical side, actually. That was all, uh, you know, that's the mechanical side. And it's challenging, but it's rewarding and fun. And, um, and the, the emotional stuff was definitely more difficult, exposing my most vulnerable sides in front of a room full of strangers at that point. That's, that was incredibly hard. Um, trying to figure out the dynamic between Harley and Joker and why she is so devoted to th this guy that tries to kill her occasionally. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like a few things like that. It took a while to get my head around, but the physical side was, was just more fun and challenging. You guys keep bringing up the fact that, you know, you did share so much stuff with each other. Which was harder for you, to keep the film secrets a secret or to keep the stuff that you guys shared with each other a secret? Joel Kinnaman doesn't keep yeah, anything. Yeah, there's no yeah, secrets yeah, Joel, when yeah, Joel's right. here. Yeah. He's, he's just mean, a soldier. He's a soldier. A soldier. soldier. Yeah, Joel Kinnaman tells everything. <laughs> Everyone wants you know, an interview with just... Joel. <laughs> He'll tell, tell you the you... end of the movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't care. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> awesome. So you guys are pretty tight-lipped with that answer. You're like, just ask Joel. Everything else is secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who is our next question from? Right in the front. Hi. Uh, can you talk a little bit about bringing humanity and humor into all the mayhem for this? Yeah, but David was really great because for, from the beginning, it was clear he wanted to do something different. He wanted to do something special. He wanted to make something that was uh, something we'd all be really proud of. And I could get the sense from him 
that he was willing to go to all lengths in order to, to get that. And that was both a little scary, but also really exciting. And uh, he, he's not only the director, but the writer of the film. And I was surprised by how much freedom he gave, I think, everybody to just go completely fucking crazy. Pretty, yeah. No, that was uh, experience. And he was... <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but what I thought was really genius about David is he was always looking for the accident. Yeah. He was always yeah. looking for the mistake yeah. and yeah, embracing yeah. that. And, and, and for Margot and I, I, there was a lot of humor. There was a lot of things that I thought were really funny in a very sick and twisted way. But uh, <laughs> uh, he was really wonderful uh, yeah. in, in that way. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, David. Yeah, I was going to say, just um, when, when David and I first had a discussion, um, you know, and he presented Killer Croc with the prosthetics that were very extensive, and my first question to him is, uh, is anybody actually going to know I'm in there? <laughs> and he said, absolutely, because he really wanted an actor that could bring the soul of the creatures to life. Mm -hmm. And I think with all of us, um, this, these are villains with souls. And I, I think that's indicative of his vision. And um, there's a beautiful moment in the movie um, where Killer Croc, where it's very easy to have a punchline that is ugly, but you know, he says, I'm beautiful. And uh, it sends a statement when a crocodilian, reptilian, black man can say, I'm beautiful, <laughs> about <laughs> acceptance, <laughs> you know? And, and I, I think in this kind of genre, that's very fearless and quite bold yeah. to make hu humane statements, so. But he wasn't humane on set, because when you go to his trailer, it was all about cannibalism. cannibalism. <laughs> he's, he's listening to cannibal chants on cannibal, his phone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you go up to him and you go, hey, Adi, and he's like, Mah. Yeah. No, he took, he took it very serious, like he was watching, uh, crocodile videos of, you know, things and, you know, cannibalism and all that. And I think that as a cast, we have a question, and I think Adewale should answer this yes. question honestly, did, once and for all. Did once you, you eat, did did you your eat any of your assistants? Because there was an assistant <laughs> that came up missing. There was, he had an assistant, and it was the, the what was the guy's Michael. name? The young guy, and you just just once and for all, we we all think you ate him. So we just we need to know. I got a surprise. For you. Yeah, we were. Like, I got a surprise for you. He's in your trailer, wrapped in a bow, with a big smile. No, no, no. But yeah, they're right. We we all. I think we all took uh, our, very, very our characters seriously, very seriously. Yeah. And and I did eat Michael. <laughs> well, just to let you guys know, that I, everybody asked, like, who was the guy that would kind of keep us together? And for, from my point of view, I saw Jai as our go-to guy to liven it up, because Boomerang mm -hmm. had this weird kind of, like, nature, yeah. right from getting out of his, his bag, his sack bag, but he, he really was... <laughs> I thought the guy that really brought the crazy because he'd have yeah. to turn it up a notch. He definitely brought the crazy. <laughs> definitely yeah. brought it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, done, I've done love scenes in, in movies. I've, I had quite a few movies where, I, where I've had really extensive love scenes, but I've never had a co-star that I've seen naked more than Jai. <laughs> you know, it was like he just he had a really, really hard time keeping his clothes on on set. He didn't feel a need. He no, just didn't feel. That, uh, there isn't a need. Something interesting, when I was on the set, I saw a photograph of a naked man yes. running after yep. David Ayer, yes. who had a look of abject terror, terror. Yeah, on his face, terror. and he's had running his perfect his running form perfect that you only yeah. see at the Olympics. <laughs> the Olympics <laughs> I mean, the most aerodynamic yeah. form and a look of intense <laughs> concentration. He didn't and then get there, I think it was a naked Jai, maybe, I'm not sure. running I'm not sure. Him. We can't say for certain. It's hard as hell enough. Pixels or did, did yeah. The story yeah. behind yeah. that picture, yeah. we'll I don't I'll never know, I don't think. It was like a gazelle. I think we got a lot. Yeah, it really was. It really was. Did anybody, who was the person that kind of said, Sikkim. Yeah. Uh, that was <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> True story behind it is. He'll show you everything. I mean, <laughs> there's not much more to it. David used to like to come and uh, and and visit kind of the uh, like base camp where our trailers all would be. Just more like, just and sure nothing was on fire. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Every now and then he'd come and keep an eye on things, and but he but he would just open your trailer door and he'd be in the kind of in there like, what's up, dude? And uh, this is one time I was like, uh, I was getting out of the shower and uh, he came in and I uh, opened the doors. So up, dude, and I was like, oh, what's up? And then I just, you know, it was the opportune moment. So I dropped the towel and went after him. And Jay went, you sick him, boy. <laughs> and off they went around we ran the whole mile, studio around parking there. lot. It was, uh, I never got him. <laughs> no. Can, can we start like an online poll or like a charity drive to release this photo? <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. like you know, it's like good charity. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, for the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the kids. We'll talk about. We'll put black bar on it somewhere. Yeah. We can yeah. buy it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's work on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to David. All right, who has our next question? In the back. Hi. Um, my name is Cynthia. I write for Black Girl Nerds. Hi. And, <laughs> hi, everybody. Uh, and this is a question for the women, Viola, Margot, Kara, Karen. Uh, one of the things that actors have to do is they have to find a way to connect with their characters or probably create a backstory for them, even though this was based on a comic book, so there's already a backstory. But what are some ways that you kind of tapped into playing your characters and is there a way that you could identify playing these female characters, but not at so as badass or smart or strong, but maybe vulnerable and narcissistic or anything of that sort? Um, I mean, I did a lot of research. The thing I found really helpful for just filling in the gaps, because like you said, we had an amazing resource at, with the comic books, and but there are still little gaps in the backstory and things you need to fill in yourself. And, um, I watched a couple of TED Talks on um, schizophrenia, um, amongst like a bunch of other things, but that really helped because the women that were doing these talks were so intelligent. I mean, they were professors, they were, you know, and, and Harley needs to be wickedly intelligent, but also kind of psychotic. So, um, I don't know, I found, that, I found that, and you told me, I think you told me to go look at the TED Talk, but it was so helpful. Um, and I also... Uh, got recommended to read a play called Fool for Love about this really dysfunctional relationship and that, for whatever reason, helped me unlock the whole, you know, feeling towards um, the Joker. So, yeah, it was like, it was things that, I don't know, you, some things hit home when you're doing all your research and some things kind of don't, but it's, yeah, it, that really helped. I definitely want to know how you connected with that character. <laughs> well... <laughs> Joel gave me a book, Joel gave me a book called Confessions of a Sociopath. <laughs> and I read that book extensively. And one of the things, it's, it's, it's a confessions of a woman who's a sociopath. And one of the things I found out is a lot of CEOs of companies are sociopaths. Mm -hmm. People who have no guilt. If they cry, they're only crying because they, they feel like they're losing control. And I, also, I tapped into Viola at eight. Because I can't tap into Viola at 51 at 8. I could beat somebody's ass. <laughs> and I could beat somebody's ass. I was just always angry because, you know, people were always teasing me. I was bullied. And I remember that was the first story I told Dave, David when I met him. He was like, oh, yeah, Viola, just tell me about your childhood. I said, well, David, I remember when I was 8 years old, I kicked a lot of ass. <laughs> <laughs> And I, so there was a part of me that had to tap into that because with women, with me, I'm always apologizing. I'm shy, I'm always retreating, I never tap into my power, and Amanda Waller is not that. She is unapologetically brutal. Yep. And I, yeah, you know, because <laughs> I had to call him a pussy a couple of times. <laughs> but. <laughs> But I had to tap into that because otherwise I would have retreated. And with this group, I couldn't retreat. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. No, she did not retreat at all. <laughs> <laughs> there was no retreat. It was pretty much every day that me and Viola had together on set. She would, you know, would, David would call on her to like come and stand behind the camera. And then she'd stand behind the camera and just yell mean things at me. <laughs> She'd be like, hey, Joel, Joel, flag. 
you little bitch. <laughs> Punk ass bitch. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, all right. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was my experience. <laughs> but Croc liked it. Yeah. <laughs> he liked he liked he liked some Amanda Waller. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was gutter. I think what happens in, in film a lot is is the male voices, and, and, and by voice I mean the character, the depth of the character, uh, the performance, the way the character is resolved and executed, and the arc of the character is incredibly developed, and often uh, the women are underdeveloped. And in this case, I wanted women that had voices and had power and were powerful as women. And you know, as a father of two daughters, I think it's important to give them examples that you can speak up in the world and you can have a viewpoint. Hell yeah. <laughs> wow, that's really sincere and sensitive of you. Uh, I don't like him seeing that side. Sorry. Never seen that never mind. Yeah. Yeah. What about for Karen and Kara? You go, Karen. Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> Over to you. Karen, you're great. <laughs> you're a pro at this. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, go, Karen. For her question? Yeah. Um, well, coming from a Japanese-American uh, family, we had a lot of those cultures and values, Japanese cultures and values, growing up in the household. You know, it was my first language, and we grew up on Japanese traditions and food and uh, TV and all of that. So I think when I, when I first read the Katana comics, I immediately fell in love and I, immedi I immediately felt like, felt like there, there was a part of her inside of me, even though our personalities were so completely different. And for me, the, the, the switch really happened when I put on the mask and the wardrobe and that really helped me tap into the character. <laughs> okay, so for me, um, uh, some of the first things David said to me were about looking into things like addiction, um, trying to find like, you know, never, like, never getting enough or never feeling like anything is enough and constantly needing something and um, that kind of thing. And then also, it was trying to find the kind of opposites of her and also kind of trying to find a demon inside myself, which I definitely was able to find. And uh, exercise. Yeah, that wasn't that hard. Just quite easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right, right. Just right there. Just a couple of inches under the surface. It's right there. It's right there. It wasn't too hard. So I had an easy job. Um, and kind of trying to make that as, as real as possible and understand why someone would do something that evil or want to really hurt that many people and, and just trying to make it real, I guess, because I think that that's what David wanted for this movie and I think that's what he gave us and that's what I wanted to give. I think we've got one more question in the audience. Oh, yeah. Right over here. Hi, uh, this question is for David. So this is one of the most diverse casts we've seen in a really long time. Yeah. And so, yeah. which, <laughs> yeah. which I think is like amazing, right? Yeah. But um, that's just my personal opinion. But um, so when you were writing the film, when you were writing it, is this something you were thinking about or did it just happen like organically? Like were you like looking and you were saying Viola's Amanda Waller, which hell yes. <laughs> but um, you know, were you thinking about any of that? I mean, look, for me, you know, I grew up in South LA. I grew up in a really diverse neighborhood. I was, I was the only white boy. That's how diverse it was. I mean, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the world I know. It's the world I live in, but it's also the world we all live in. And I feel like on, on screen, um, you know, kids need to see people that look like them. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my wife is Latina, you know, my kids are Latinos, so it's, it's important for them to see faces like theirs on the screen. Mm -hmm. and, and this is also, it's a global business these days, and, and we need to evolve with the times. But, you know, it, it comes naturally to me, but I think, you know, that's, in diversity is strength, and, and we need to be a lot more inclusive in film. We really need to work on that, and in our world in general. Yeah. Right. So I love hearing what everybody had to say, and thank you guys so much for your questions. But I want to know too, just seeing 
all of the cast up here and hearing how you guys interact together. For Charles and David and Richard, did you guys ever have moments on set where you were like, oh my God, what did we get ourselves into? How is this movie getting made? <laughs> For me, it was like, I mean, look at this cast assembled up here and this great filmmaker. It's a producer's dream. It's the best way I could equate it is like being the manager of the all-star team. You get to go to work every day and you get to see the greatest actors in the world all collaborating together. So for me, it was a producer's dream because you really are watching the best of the best go to work and I couldn't ask for a better job. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, I, I would just echo that by also saying, you know, David <coughs> took these great characters from uh, the, you know, the canon, the comics, and he wrote a great script that had great characterizations. And, uh, and then we had this amazing group of actors actually really mine it and make it even better. So it was really a producer's dream. Not all the time in terms of getting them to get serious sometimes, but at the end, <laughs> at the end of the day, at watching the dailies, it, it couldn't have been better. But also, too, it's like working on films, <laughs> if the guys on top aren't on our level as the actors, it's not going to work. So to know that our leaders out there were, were setting up and making it that comfortable space, we wouldn't be who we are. So. You know, they're blowing it off too, like it's like, oh, no worries. <laughs> but it comes from the top, you know. So you're saying they were running around naked right next to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Chuck all the time. Chuck, yeah. Chuck all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I see Chuck up close. The trick is, is never show fear. They, they are many. I am one. You, you can never show fear or they'll just turn on you, you know. And, and the other thing is always have an answer, even if you're just making it up and don't believe in what yeah. you're saying. Just, just pretend you know what you're doing and, and they kind of will follow you. Yeah, now every once in a while we would look at David and I'm like, hey man, you, you know you just made that up, right? <laughs> you know that's not the real answer to the question. You yeah. just made it up he, and he would just give guy, He'd call me out, yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, is that light ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, that's all the time that we have with them for right now. Huge thank you to the entire cast. Make sure you guys go see it on August 5th, August 6th, August 7th, every day for the rest of the summer. I'm Tiffany Smith from Fandango DC All Access. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you to them. Hey, I've got some more Suicide Squad for you. Now, this Suicide Squad movie is the first comic-based film to feature a team of supervillains, where they're the main cast of characters in a comic book film. Also, the majority of the cast got the Tattoo Squad in honour of the film. Now, the tattoos were even applied by some of the cast members, Margot Robbie and Will Smith. And the tattoos were done at Harley's Tattoo Parlour in reference to Robbie's character, Harley Quinn. Now, who is your favourite character from the Suicide Squad? Let us know in the comments below. Mine, without a doubt, is Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Now keep it tuned to Film Is Now movie trailers for everything movie related.